in this InDesign workshop, we will go through the whole InDesign workspace, learn the most important instruments and tools, see how to work in collaboration with another Adobe softwares, work with layers and parent page. What is InDesign and how is it used in architecture? InDesign is one of three main Adobe programs along with Photoshop and Illustrator for architects. It's incredibly helpful to learn all three together as they complement each other. InDesign is specifically designed for layout and is fast and efficient for that purpose. Please don't use Photoshop or Illustrator for layout. Those programs don't offer automatic page management and you can create multi-page layouts in a single file. There are no master pages or parent pages, no automatic page numbering, and you'll have less control than handling large amounts of text and images. So if you want to create a proper portfolio later, InDesign is the right tool. We recommend using the official version of the software. Without it, you can benefit from the latest features and updates. Let's start by creating a new document and exploring the workspace. Now this is the InDesign 2025 home screen just after installation. There are some templates available here, but we'll create our own by clicking new file. Now they can see more templates like saved for print, web, mobile. We can use this or create our own. On the right side, you can write down the name for your own template, set up millimeters and orientation, say how many pages there are and save it. I want to work with a portfolio template. That's why I'm going to create an A4 landscape document with at least 10 facing pages. You don't need to save every layout preset here, just the ones you use often. Facing pages are very important in this case because if we create a new document for a portfolio, we will see it as a book. So this is what the settings for landscape-oriented portfolio file look like. Of course, you can make it portrait if you want and then click create. Let's make a quick overview. You can see the facing pages and to navigate it, you can push command plus and command minus or push option and scroll your mouse. Then on the right, you can see pages, libraries and properties, layers, links, stroke, colors, and so on. Don't forget about effects. Uh, above you can see a panel, control panel. If you can't see it, push on window and turn it on like this. You can also turn on another settings if you can see them, for example, properties or pages. Just repeat what you see on the screen. Yeah, I think it's all right. And on the left, you can see all the tools we will use in this workshop. Let's move on with a parent page. On your right up, you can see the parent page settings. Anything you edit here will be shown on all pages. Standard InDesign document already has one as we are using different layouts on different pages in portfolio and for that they need different settings, we can create multiple parent pages. One more time, if you want some elements to appear on all of your pages, like a grid or page number, you do it inside of the parent page. To set a parent page, make double click inside the white page in the menu. For example, we can apply some guides. And if we go back to the working space, they can see that these guides are applied to all our pages in the portfolio file. You can delete or edit there, so go back to the parent page to do it. For my first parent page, I want to apply some columns. So I go to the layout, columns. I can change the number of the columns. And I can see that they are applied for the one parent page. They can also add some space between them. And then double click on the second parent page and repeat the same. 
So let's also make free and add some space. I think it's enough for the first parent page. Now let's go back to the working space and take a look. Now we can see that our settings from the parent page are applied to all our working pages. Of course, we don't need the same layout on every page in our portfolio. That's why we are going to create another parent page. To create another one, click the right mouse into the gray space in front of the parent page and choose new parent page. We don't need to change anything here. We can just press OK. Let's double click in the parent page B and repeat the same. For example, let's apply some guides in the middle of the page. Something like this. And also for the second part. To apply in the new settings from your new parent page B, drag and drop it on the page you want to have the same setting. You can create as much parent pages as you want and change the settings anytime, but don't forget about the clean system to keep your layout consistent. Another important thing to do on the parent page is page numbering. Open the parent page A, take T symbol, the text tool, and draw a text box. You don't need to type anything, but you can choose the font. Something like this. Then go to type, insert special character, markers, and current page number. You can see there's an A, and it's because we are on the parent page A, and we also need to align it on the right. Yeah, and like this. If you go back to the working space, they see that page numbering is applied on every page. But if we apply settings from the parent page B, page numbering is gone. And to fix that, we just copy our text fields from parent page A and go to parent page B and insert them there. And we see an automatic B in this text field. And then by going back to the working space, we see that there is no difference which parent page was applied. Page numbering is correct. And if you insert new pages later, the numbers will be added too. Press W to preview your document and check if you like the position of the page numbering and if needed, move it on the parent page. Like in Photoshop and Illustrator, layers keep things organized, lock or hide them to avoid moving or deleting content by mistake. You can find layers on your right, and we already have our first layer. We can double click to change the name of it or the color. Let's just leave it as it is. And let's type the name. OK. We can add another one by clicking on the plus and it's automatically with another color and let's also give it a name. Okay. Here you can hide and lock your layers by clicking on the eye symbol or on the slog symbol. We don't have anything here yet, so we can see the changes. But it's important to use layers to keep your layout organized and create extra layers for, to keep your file clean. Once you have created your file, set up parent pages, applied guides or columns, edit page numbers, take a breath. And let's move on to the tools. We will make a quick tool demo. I've placed here some forms and if I click on it, I see that it's green and it means that this form is on the layer called form. First tool is the selection tool to work with the object frame. If you have an object inside of the frame, use a direct selection tool to adjust the content inside of it. 
I will show it a bit later. The next one is the page tool. You can resize pages independently, but it's not a very common used tool for portfolio. The gap tool. Create and adjust space between objects. Let's dive deeper with the text tool. Select it and draw a text box. And don't forget about using the correct layer for text. Let's position the text underneath the future image. Just leave it like this and go to type and insert placeholder text. Okay, now let's adjust text frame exactly on our column. And we can see that text doesn't fit in the text frame anymore. Then the text frame is smaller and the text no longer fits. You'll see an arrow icon. To fix this, we need to add another text frame to continue the overflow text. We will do it by clicking the small red plus icon in the bottom right corner. The remaining text that didn't fill will now be placed into a new frame. Just click anywhere on the page to insert it. Even though we now have two frames, they are still connected. So any changes to the text settings will apply to both. I've increased the text again and it doesn't fit anymore, so I'm going to repeat the same process once more. I click on the red plus one more time and insert the text on the right. Now we can move to the next, the line tool for drawing straight lines. Let's take one and draw a line. To see the line you need to apply the stroke. I'll make something like this and just move the line somewhere here. We can also change the type of the line to make it look more interesting. Next one is the pen tool for drawing free shapes. And another one drawing to the pencil tool. You can apply the same changes for all of these lines, like for the line tool. The frame tool. Frames are important in the early stages of your layout. Use them as a placeholder for your future content. Each frame acts like a clipping mask for the object you place inside. Let's take one and make a few copies. And in the next part of the workshop, we will place some pictures inside of it. And the last one, the rectangle tool. We use it for background elements or frames. Just go to the control panel to adjust the fill color or the stroke color. Again, we have some standard colors available. And in the next part, we will show you how to create your own custom color sets. Press W to preview your file and let's move. Now you know how to create a file and work with InDesign's tools, it's time to start adding your content. To add your files into the document, press Ctrl D or Command D, choose the file to place, or just drag and drop it into your placeholder frames directly from an open folder. InDesign supports a lot of formats, all placed in original size. And here's my personal tip, Use Illustrator and Photoshop files if you work there. I also took here one Illustrator file from my thesis and I will place another one by going to File and Place. Let's take another diagram. To resize the image to fit the frame, click on this white rectangle. And then use the direct selection tool to move the content inside of the frame. Let's delete the, this frame and make it a bit more beautiful. And move the content inside of the frame. And press W to preview. 
all of your files are added as a link to the file on your computer. That means if you delete or move the original file from the place it was before, InDesign will show you a red flag. So keep your working space, the files clean and don't lose them. Still, if it happened, you can try to click on the lost file and reconnect it from a new place. If you work in Illustrator or Photoshop, you can place those file formats directly into your InDesign layout. This way, if you need to make edits, you don't have to re-import them. Changes will update automatically after saving the original file. Just make sure you overwrite the file in the same location, because saving it under a new name or in a new location won't update it automatically. To edit the original file, right-click on it and choose Edit with, and then select Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator will open the original file. Here it is. Let's just delete something and go to File and save it. It will be saved by the same name in the same place. And then go back to the InDesign. Now we see a yellow triangle in the Links panel. Just double click the icon and InDesign will refresh the file. Let's say I actually still need the text I deleted and I'll go back to Illustrator, undo the change, save it again and return to InDesign, then refresh. And the update is now restored. With the relink option we can also replace the file, placing a new one in the same position without needing to draw a new placeholder. Don't forget to adjust the image size by using few frame proportionally or fine-tuned manually with the direct selection tool. Once your layout is ready, it's time to export it, either for print or digital use. If you plan to print your portfolio, make sure your images and drawings are in CMYK and for digital version use RGB. At the beginning, we created a print document, so InDesign automatically set it to CMYK. To export it, go to File, Adobe PDF Presets, High Quality Print. Choose there to save the file, and an export window will appear with some more settings. In the main window, you'll see general settings, like which pages to export. In our case, we'll export all pages. Under the Compression tab, the default is 300 pixel per inch for color and grayscale and 1200 for monochrome. To reduce file size without losing much of quality, you can lower this to 150 for color and grayscale and 600 for monochrome. Now it's exported. Let's take a look. When we zoom in, they can see the quality is still good and the file is ready for print. 